Hey YouTubers, welcome to DigiTalks. So one of the things us Tesla drivers love about our cars is the morning after. I'm not suggesting for a second that Elon has come up with some miracle hangover cure. I'm of course referring to the morning after a software update. So last night I received 2019.24.4 and um, I just want to have a look what we've got. So I've got in the car this morning and uh, the release notes are that there's sketchpad improvements Sketchpad is improved to make it easy to create your next masterpiece, etc., etc. Um, owner's manual improvements. Search the owner's manual by typing search terms, quickly move through search results. Um, and then there's the Beach Buggy Racing 2 and uh, Application Launcher, which we've already covered in previous videos. So on the face of it, not a great deal of an update, or at least not anything that um, I would term as important or significant. However, one thing that does happen when we get our software updates is we do get behind the covers uh, bug fixes and improvements usually to autopilot. So uh, I'm going to get out on the road today and I'm going to see if uh, autopilot's any better, any worse, so if there's anything good going on or anything bad creeped in, uh, which wouldn't be unusual. So uh, hope you enjoy. Straight off the bat, uh, driving on these kinds of roads which are well marked and um, generally sweeping, not too many too sharp turns and Pretty standard stuff really. As always, AP performs, in my view, really well in these situations. Uh, just still clearly miles ahead of everything else that's available on the market, um, but this is not really testing the car, it's not really testing the computer. It's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. So you would expect it to perform really well. On this road, uh, the car does occasionally suffer from some false positives where it breaks see something and it breaks slightly or in some cases breaks even hard and um, there's nothing there so then it releases the brakes and carries on so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll give it a test down this road and what I am going to do is I'm going to head to my local supercharger which will take me on to some motorway give us a chance to test navigate on autopilot as well but really um, as we would expect from autopilot performance on this kind of road these kind of conditions clear day nice and sunny uh, nicely marked roads, steady traffic, sweeping curves. Yeah, it should perform really, really well. Let's see how we get on. Okay, so car really slowed down for that bend and it slowed down early. Um, earlier than normal. It usually creeps over the line a bit there because the lines disappear and it did again so that's um, still an issue but it does appear to be slowing early for the corners and again slowing nice and early for this one. We'll probably get the warning the steering is limited, we did but it handled it all perfectly well so it's handling everything perfectly. It's um, giving us the warnings this might have a problem yeah creeped over the line there okay so we still got some issues should we say with autopilot's ability to deal with unusual um, situations or not maybe particularly unusual for us but certainly unusual for uh, the current um, standard case for autopilot I mean remembering that autopilot is currently really configured for uh, motorway driving or um, for um, a road driving so really for handling more straight multi-lane sweeping curved roads rather than country lanes and villages so but but as you can see I mean it handles it relatively well if you um, if you're there if you're paying attention and ready to take over then nothing's going to happen there which is going to cause you any major issues it will stop now because it will see all these cars parked here so I'm going to take it off autopilot and take over but um yeah, still a few creases to iron out uh, around village driving, country lane driving, town driving, whichever you want to call it. I know that um, Elon's been talking about that going to the next level, should we say, for the new hardware, Hardware 3, which is out on all new ordered kit, all new ordered um, cars. But um, he's also obviously also talked about retrofitting the um, people that have paid for full self-driving capability uh, towards the end of this year and again I think that will probably roll out mostly in the US first uh, or then come to Europe and the UK 
much later, I'd guess at some time through 2020. Um, nevertheless, it is a free upgrade, which is pretty cool. Uh, I say free upgrade, we did pay for full self-driving, so maybe not free, <laughs> but um, at least we're not having to pay to have the work done or to have the new computer installed. So anyway, a uh, few things to iron out there. Oh, a very minor brake. Just a dabbing of the brake there or slowing of speed when it's all that tractor. It seems to react to tractors um, more so than cars. It just seems to be that way. I just uh, I just notice, especially out here where there are a lot of tractors, it, uh, it does tend to respond or react to tractors more than it does normal cars for some reason. I'm not sure if that's um, just coincidental or a thing, but it definitely, definitely, in my experience, sees tractors as a bigger obstacle or as uh, something more to be concerned with. So uh, a little dab on the brakes. Nothing too major, wouldn't have actually affected anybody behind me if there'd been anyone behind me. It wasn't slowing down. Um, as you'll see on the speed, it might have dropped a mile or two per hour. I'll double check that when I get back, but uh, yeah, nothing major there. Something it does there, which is still, for me, a major issue for this type of driving is that it doesn't respond to speed changes until well after the speed restriction has kicked in. And uh, as most of you will probably know, if you come into a speed restriction area and you're doing, I mean, you haven't slowed to the speed restricted area by the time you hit the sign, there's every chance you can be zapped by a camera or you are essentially speeding at that point. So we really need to get that introduced where it knows what the speed limit is for the road ahead, uh, anticipates it, starts to slow the car down before it gets there. It's not a big a big deal in my view. It's not something that should be particularly hard to implement. Uh, it should have been there from the start. I'm, I'm not sure why we're still waiting until after speed signs to slow down. That's bad. Certainly wasn't slowing down for that crossroad. Okay. So we're back on uh, motorways, um, pretty much what Autopilot is currently configured and designed for. So let's see how it acts in here. So obviously the uh, navigator on Autopilot has kicked in. So it's suggesting lane changes now, which we'll follow up on now. Let's see what it does. And again, I'm not expecting there to be any great shakes with this. Um, frankly, what I've seen from the roads I've just been on, so um, rural roads, country roads, well marked some of them, some of them not. I haven't seen any improvements to this version of Autopilot. No obvious improvements to this version of Autopilot. It still suffered some of the same issues it suffered in previous versions. Um, but then I really wasn't expecting a great deal. I was hoping for uh, some improvements, but I wasn't expecting a great deal. Um, navigating Autopilot is still doing its thing again, as I would expect to see. We are just about to pull off up here, so I wouldn't expect it to suggest pulling out to overtake these slower cars now. I'd expect it to keep us in this lane, ready for us to pull off at the next supercharger. So, bottom line, not seeing any improvements or obvious improvements to autopilot in this current release. Um, maybe there's some subtle changes there that I'm just not picking up on, but I'm not seeing them. Uh, so yeah, so for the sake of a sketchpad update, um, I'm not really seeing anything really worth talking about. Another incremental set of bug, fix bug fixes and updates, but nothing to write home about. Let's get some free juice and then do some more testing. It's still turning off. It's still turning off the motorway on navigating autopilot quite nicely, which is still quite a cool feature. But uh, it was doing it in previous release, so again, nothing to report. immediately suggesting I pull out. There's a car coming up right behind me so it would be safe but let's switch it on anyway. And there we 
goes. No, it aborted. I think that abort was probably because it took more than five seconds, so let's give it a, another go. Yeah, I think that abort was because it was not within the five seconds, which is the current rule um, for uh, the European Union recent updates. So one of those is the steering restrictions at various speeds. So you have to be below a certain speed depending on the sharpness of the turn to, to for the uh, auto turn to take care of everything as comfortably as it usually does and it has to have man completed the manoeuvre to change lanes within five seconds I think it is, I believe it is, uh, otherwise it aborts it, which it did then, uh, which had completely unnecessary, there's no benefit or purpose that I can really see. Let's just imagine that uh, the car was driving itself now. See what it would choose to do. I'll just follow the instructions on navigate and autopilot. I'll do none of my own maneuvers, so let's see what happens. It's just holding me to the middle lane, which I wouldn't normally do. I'd normally have pulled into the inside lane by now. Um, there's no need to be in the middle lane at this point. I'm not overtaking anybody. There's uh, no reason to be there at all. I mean, other than actually, good point, I'm coming up to a motorway um, entry point. So staying in the middle lane would obviously be the safest option um, in general. But now that we're past that, let's see if navigating autopilot suggests we pull in. Still no. There is a car up ahead which has just pulled out in front of me. Uh, almost suggested taking the next overtaking lane, but it changed its mind. The car in front of me is pulled in, and we've passed the lane car on the inside, so let's see if it suggests pulling in. Now, I think we're actually catching really slowly, but well, I think we're actually catching the lane, the car on the inside lane. <coughs> Therefore, it probably wouldn't suggest that we pull into that lane. We are catching it ever so slightly. I think it's going to pull out again, it is. And I'm going to stay on this road for a little bit just to see how Navigate and Autopilot handles things. Okay, it, it thinks that we are turning off at the next junction because that's what I've got programmed into the sat nav. So it is now suggesting that we pull in but I'm going to ignore that. It just beeped at me to tell me that I need to be pulled in. Because that's what navigation is thinking we're going to do, but I'm just going to ignore it. Yep. Okay, so if it was on autopilot with no intervention, it would be taking me into the inside lane. It would be preparing to take off the um, exit ramp and it would be doing all the things that you would want it to do if it was driving itself. I'll say I'm going to ignore that. I'm going to go past this exit. I don't want to go into the um, next lane either because it will then automatically try and exit me. Right, I'm in the middle lane and it's slowing the car down dramatically for that turning. So I'm going to put my foot on the throttle now. Well, that wasn't very good. So, because Navigate said that I was due to pull off there, it got to that junction and then really slowed the car down, yet I was still in the middle lane of the motorway. So I was aware of cars behind me, or at least there weren't cars behind me, so I was quite willing to let it do that. But had there been cars behind me travelling at speed, then that would have caused them to slow down, which was uh, certainly not what we'd want. Okay, so there's some interesting behaviour there. If you um, if you ignore the navigation, you don't take the inside lane and the exit ramp, then autopilot slows the car down at the point of that junction. You could argue that you'd want to slow down and maybe take that junction, but from the middle lane, I wouldn't suggest that would be a good idea because that would be a fairly sharp manoeuvre across two lanes. Um, should have maybe left it there to see how much it slowed the car down before carrying on as normal. But um, I wasn't willing to make 
myself an obstacle on the motorway. So there's some behaviour there that's not necessarily best. Okay, it's keeping us in this middle lane now. A couple of times it has thought about moving to the outside lane like now. Okay, well let's do what it says. Auto lane change inhibited. Okay, well I did put full indicator on there, so let's not, not put full indicator on, let's just do the touching of it. And, and again, just aborted that lane change. Didn't It didn't initiate the lane change, let's try again. It didn't initiate the lane change, there's nothing coming, so it's perfectly safe to do so. And it aborted it because it didn't complete within the five seconds, I think. So there's still some really weird stuff going on. So most recent update, doesn't seem to have improved autopilot as far as I can tell. Let's see if it pulls us back in or just leaves us in the top lane. Okay, right, well, we're doing 70, so we're doing the speed limit. We are slowly catching the car on the middle lane, so it's unlikely it would tell us to pull in. There are cars behind me catching me, so traveling slightly faster than the speed limit. So at the moment I'll be an obstacle for them, but then actually with how close I am to the car in the middle lane I would have chosen to pull in unless I was slowing down anyway. So we'll continue to do what we're doing. Right, the car on the inside's pulled in, so let's see if navigating autopilot now pulls us into the middle lane. It does, so it touched the stalk. No, it stopped again. Why has it stopped? Okay, it changed its mind. So it's keeping me in the middle lane now. There is a car behind me in the middle lane. I'm actually gonna force a change now because I am now becoming an obstacle for the cars behind, so, okay. I'm gonna get into the right inside lane. Put autopilot back on. Okay, so it's kind of a reset really. Get back on the inside lane, autopilot back on, and let's see what it does now. But that was really not the kind of behaviour you'd really want. It, it put me into the middle lane, kept me there, then it put me into the top lane and kept me there. And actually aborted, or at least not concluded a turn into the middle lane. Um, when there was no real obstruction or reason not to do so. And then I was really just becoming an obstacle for faster moving traffic in the fast lane. So the fact that I was doing the speed limit is neither here nor there really. If there are cars like that one coming up behind me, um, I was really just an obstacle for them. So, okay, it's keeping me on the inside lane now because we're traveling at the speed limit. The car in front is also traveling at the speed limit. There's absolutely no reason why it would um, pull me into the middle lane because there's nothing to overtake. So, some strange stuff still happening on navigating autopilot. So still a long way to go before that's really where we need it to be. So in summary, um, not really any improvement on previous versions of the software updates, or at least not in terms of anything that I can detect or, or find in my testing. So another update to include some cosmetic changes, a sketch pad and a few other bits and pieces, but um, hasn't really made any improvements to autopilot as far as I can tell. Um, real shame. I think we need to start seeing some improvements on autopilot fairly soon. Uh, I know the new hardware and therefore the new software that's being written to make best use of that hardware will make a difference, but that's a good year or so away for us UK drivers. Um, I hope that's been useful. Uh, I hope that's helped to uh, answer any questions you might have around the new software release for um, older hardware cars. If you have enjoyed the video, please remember to like it um, or dislike it and let me know what I could be doing better. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. I'm always happy to respond to those. Um, don't forget to share and get that video out there and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks a lot and go well.